told your friend you're not okay And tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way and Guess you're trying to stay strong and fake a smile until I look away But I've known you too long, it hurts to watch your blue eyes fade Hi guys, welcome back again to the channel Today we are going to learn how to make a shirt, female shirt I'll show you a very simple method of making the shirt and at the end of this tutorial you should be able to make one for yourself so if you're interested continue watching make sure you watch to the end so you won't miss out of any important information so with that being said let's get started So this is the material I'll be using for the shirt. I have one and a half yards here. And it's by 60. So we are going to, because of the texture of the material, I'll be drafting on this pattern paper. So guys, I'll be drafting the front and back together. So after drafting the two of them, later we are going to trace out the back on a, on a separate pattern paper. And I'll show you how to do that. Then we are going to modify the shoulder, as simple as that. But before we continue, please give this video a thumbs up so that others can see it as well and watch. And if you have not subscribed, subscribe to join the family and turn the notification bell on for more videos. Thank you so much. So we're going to start now. So to draft the shirt, the first thing you're going to consider is the bottom placket. I'm going to minus 3 inches for my bottom placket. You can use 2.5 if you wish. So this is our bottom placket. Then after that, I'll draw a line, my starting point line. This can be any measurement. So on this shoulder line, I'm going to add my shoulder measurement. My shoulder measurement is 16 divided by 2 is 8. But because you are making a shirt, a free shirt, this shirt will not have that. So it's a free shirt. Because of that, I'll be adding half inch. To my shoulder measurement so instead of eight inches i'll be marking 8.5 then the next thing i'll mark is my my neck width i'll be making use of 2.5 inches for my neck width then i mark on this shoulder measurement i'll slope the shoulder by 1.5 inches instead of one inch shoulder slope i slope the shoulder by 1.5 inches so that the shoulder will relax very well Okay, so having gotten the shoulder slope, this line now is now our new shoulder line, slanted, no longer this. So from this shoulder slope, I'll take my armhole depth. My armhole depth is 8, then I mark. To get your armhole depth, just measure your round armhole and divide by 2, or your ball circumference divide by 6. Whatever you get, you add it 1.5 inches. So I'm going to connect like this. The next step is to draw my armhole curve. And to do that, on this armhole depth, I'll add my bus circumference. My bus circumference is 39 divided by 4, 9.75. 9.75 is here. Then I'm going to be adding one inch for ease because you are making a shirt, a free shirt. Okay, one inch for ease. And this is, this is what I have now. So I'll connect. I'm going to draw the two armhole, the front armhole and the back armhole. For the front armhole, I'll take the midpoint of the, of the armhole depth, which is four. Eight divided by two, four. And I'm going to come inward by half an inch and mark. So I'll draw my armhole curve like this. So I'm going to draw my back armhole now like this. Now we have the back armhole and the front armhole. Having gotten that, I'm going to add my neck depth. 
my front neck depth is going to be three inches front neck depth three inches then i mark so i'm going to connect like this so what i have here is 2.5 by 3 inches so this is okay for shirts for the back neck depth i'm going to measure half inch for the back neck depth half and i'll connect so here we have the back neck neckline and the front neckline having gotten that we are going to take the vertical measurement so the vertical measurement you know is the measurement from the shoulder downwards from the shoulder to my waist i've already marked for the bust here this represents my bust measurement from the shoulder to my waist is 18 inches then i mark then from the shoulder to the length of the shirt is going to be 26 inches 26 inches i'll be adding one inch there making it 27 inches you can do any length of your choice so having done that i'll impute my horizontal measurement now my waist measurement is 36 divided by 4 will give us 9 plus 1 inch for ease making it 10 inches then coming to the length of the shirt my hip measurement is 43 divided by 4 is 10.75 10.75 plus 1 inch for ease making it 11.75 so i'll connect the points so we are going to add, i'm going to be adding my sewing allowance here of 1 inch The next thing I'm going to do is to come here. At this point, I will not want it sharp, so I'll come up by 2 inches and curve. It's optional though. If you want, you leave it straight like this. Or if you like, you can curve the same way I'm curving mine. So, I've curved the down part. If you want to make a shirt with a dart, that is a fitted shirt. Then in that case, you don't, you don't need to add 1 inch for ease here. All this ease allowance I added, you don't need to add it. You can just add only 0 0.25 for ease allowance on all of them. And then you place your dart. But remember to add your dart allowance at the waistline. That is if you want to add that. I'll be cutting the back, the back part of the shirt first. So to cut it, I'm going to fold my placket inward so i'm going to place this on a separate pattern paper like this so i'll place it like this at the edge like this So I'll trace the neckline So the reason I'm tracing out the shoulder and everything is just because we are going to modify the shoulder Because the part of the back shoulder is going to fall back to the front part Because we are making a shirt. I hope you understand So having done that I'll cut the neckline now. So I'll cut the neckline now. The front neckline, I'll cut it out now. So this is what we have. So guys, the next thing I'll be doing now is to modify the shoulder. I'll reduce the front shoulder by one inch and place the one inch to the back shoulder because the back shoulder is going to fall back to the front shoulder by one inch i'll measure one inch and mark and i'll come here 
Measure one inch and mark as well. So I'll connect. So this is my one inch. So I'm going to cut it out now and place it at the back shoulder. To transfer this one inch to the back shoulder, I'll simply turn this paper upside down. I'll turn it like this and face it here. Do you understand? So that by, by the time it, it falls back to the front part, it's going to rhyme together with the neckline and the armhole. So I will trace what I have. Let me use this red marker so that you will understand very well. So, you see the shape I have here? So that by the time this, this one inch falls back to the front, it will rhyme together with the neckline, where we'll remove it from, and rhyme together with the armhole. Do you understand? So this is just basically what we need to do for the back, and we are done. I'll fold this inward. So make sure the down part is equal. So I'm going to cut it out now. I'm going to fold this like this. I fold it like this. You see? After folding it, the neckline rhymes together with the neckline, the front neckline, and then this armhole also rhymes together. So at this point, if you have not liked this video, Go ahead and give it a thumbs up so that others can see it as well. So, this is the back and then this is the front. To fold the bottom placket, I'm going to fold in one inch. You know, I removed, I removed three inches. So, I'll fold in one inch so that this place will be, will be a kind of double. So that by the time you do your bottom hole, that place will be very strong. So I'll fold it like this and I'll fold it again like this. So the bottom space is going to be one inch. Do you understand? So guys, we are going to cut on our fabric now. I have two pieces here for the front. The only place I added extra allowance is at the shoulder. Remember to add the shoulder allowance to join the shoulders together. So this is the back side. I also added my shoulder allowance and then I cut it on fold. I cut it on fold. So guys, before we start the sewing, please take note. If you want a different button placket for your shirt, it must not be the same material or true. So if you want a different material, different fabric for your button placket, then what you have to do is that after cutting, you cut out this, these three inches, cut it out and use it to cut another material you want to combine your shirt with. Then you, are, you will now attach it back for your button placket. I hope it's clear. So like I explained before, I'm going to go ahead and fold my button placket. So that is the first thing to do. And after folding the button placket, I will join the two shoulders, the front shoulder to the back shoulder. Then I'll be right back. So I'm going to trim the this excess now. So this is how the plaquette is overlapping each other. This is where we are going to fix our button. 
we are going to notch the center here so i will equally notch here to guide us as the center of the shoulder so that we fit the sleeve very well without mistakes i will be cutting the sleeve after cutting the sleeve i'll fix it then before we now cut the collar so i will use this paper to draft the sleeve so i folded this paper into two I'm going to mark my starting point. So I'm going to measure my armhole depth. My armhole depth is 8. And on that point, I'll go down by 4 inches and mark. I'll remeasure my armhole depth, 8, at that point. Then I'll add 1 inch for ease. Remember, we added 1 inch for ease during the drafting of the shirt. So I will probably add one inch for ease here. So from this point, from this one inch ease, I'll make a curve. I'll make a curve like an S shape. I have a tutorial on how to draft a basic sleeve. So if you don't know how to do this, go ahead and check the video out. I'll leave it in the description box. Click the link to watch so you learn how to draft a basic sleeve. So after drawing that, we'll add one inch for sewing allowance. One inch for sewing allowance, and I will, I will extend it there. Okay? So I'll come to this point. My round sleeve here is 11 inches. 11 divided by 2 is 5.5. Then I'll add one inch for sewing allowance. So I'm going to connect. So I'm... Um, before I forget, I'm going to add ease allowance here. I will not want it tight. So before I forget, I'll add I'll add 0 0.5 each for ease allowance here. So it will not be tight there. So I'm going to trim the front side by removing 0 0.5 inch at this point so this is the front while this is the back I'm going to notch the center so my sleeve length is supposed to be 16 inches so I'm going to use this to complete the sleeve. So it's on fold plus the sewing allowance. So I'm going to fix it here. It will be like this. So guys, we are going to fix the sleeve now. This side that I mark is the front side of the sleeve. And this is the front side of the sleeve. This is the front part of the shirt. So this is how we are going to fix the sleeve. So this is the front. I'm going to place it like this. I'll match the these two notches together. So I'll place it like this. And I'm going to pin towards the front and then pin towards the back. the machine and sew the sleeve then after sewing the sleeve we'll have something like this then after sewing the sleeve I'm going to close the two sides so I'll fold the sleeve like this into two and I'm going to close the sides of the shirt from the sleeve so I'm going to sew like this I added one inch sewing allowance, so I'm going to sew with one inch to the armhole, then to the length of the shirt. So guys, we are going to cut the collar now. The first thing I'm going to do is to measure the neckline. We are going to, we are going to measure it gently, 
and I will not stretch it while taking the measurement. So here I have 18.5. Make sure to measure the neckline very well so you won't make any mistake. I'm going to use this color stay to draft the color. I folded the color stay into two. Then I'm going to place my measurements here. So but before then, I'll draw a line here, a straight line to guide us. So 18.5 divided by 2 will give us 9.25. So I'm going to measure 9.25, which is the neck line measurement. So this is 9.25, then I mark. Okay? So we are going to take the height of the color stand. So for me, I'm going to be making use of 1.25. For the height of the color stand. So I'll measure 1.25 here and mark. I'll come here and measure 1.25 and mark. So for the color stand to balance of to balance very well, I'm going to come here and measure 0 0.25 and mark. 0 0.25 such that from here to here will be one inch so i'll connect from here to the center of this line so we're going to take the center of this line so i'll fold the collar into two to take the center so i'll connect from here to this point which is the center point of this line i'm going to connect with a curve a very slight curve so with this the color is going to lap very well on the neck area you understand so having done that we are now going to draft the color itself so the height of the collar for me is going to be 2.5 and I mark 2.5 At that point I'll measure the same uh, neckline which is 9.25 So having done that I'll draw a line across the point like this So the next thing I'll be doing is to come here and I'll measure one inch at this point inward and mark. So from that point, I'll connect to this point. So if you want, you can make your line to be straight. Feel free to do what you want, but this side is better. So at this point, if you want to leave it in a four corner shape, I'm going to make a, a very sharp curve here. It comes out very beautiful if you curve this point. So I'm going to make a very sharp curve like this. So the next thing is to come here at this point and come down by one inch and mark one inch and mark so from this one inch i'll make it i'll connect to this point with a curve like this so we no longer need this line we no longer need this line so i'll be making use of this line now instead of this the reason why i came down by one inch is so that by the time you put your shirt on by the time you wear it and then you fold the collar like this. You know, this side will fall at the back, at the back side of the collar stand. I hope you understand what I mean. So, coming towards this side, minus this one inch will help 
this part to relax very well at the neck area do you understand so that it will not be choking you at the neck area so this minus this one inch is very okay so that the, the color will relax very well by the time you wear it and you feel very comfortable on it so that is it so the distance from here to here is should be equal to distance from here to here or a little bit more so if you measure from here to here you get 1.5 and if you measure from here to here you get 1.25 so the difference from the, the difference between this to this is just 0.25. I hope you understand. So at this point, I'm going to cut the color out. So guys, this is what we have. So if you are into mass production of shirts, then you are going to cut, place this on your fabric and cut exactly, cut with your sewing allowance. Then you are going to sew all round like this, all round. Then after sewing, turn to the right side and then you run a stitch at the center here like this. Especially uh, if you are making a screw uniform, a mass. So you just go ahead and do it like this. It will save you a lot of time but for this tutorial I'm going to go ahead and separate the color stand from the color so this is the color stand while this is the color itself so I'll get I'll go ahead and place it on the material use my pressing iron to stick it on the material then after that I'll cut with 0 0.5 inch sewing allowance all round so guys this is what we have now i have it two pieces now this is the lining you can even use a different material for the lining if you want so i equally have the the lining here for the color stand the first thing we are going to do is to sew this one I'll go over to the machine and stitch from here following the sewing allowance that I have and then stop here then after that I'll cut off this side and cut off this side so that it will be easy for me to turn to the right side and it will relax very well so I'll go over to the machine now sew this turn to the right side give it a good press and I'll be right back so guys this is the color so we are through with this one for the color stand, remember, this is the place you are going to fix on the neckline, this place. Just with this curve, you should be able to know which side is which. I hope you understand. So this side is where I'm going to fix to the neckline. So I'm going to fold in the sewing allowance. I'm going to use hemming gum to do that. So I'm going to put hemming gum inside. I'll fold this hemming gum like this. Place it. Place it here and fold. So I'll iron. I'm going to iron as I fold. The next step is to join the color stand to the color. So I'll fold the two of them to get the center. So this is the center. So I'm going to place it like this so that the two sides, this side and this side will be at the same side. Okay, so having done this, the next thing is to use the lining to cover the collar like this. 
So you can pin it to be on the safe side. We are going to pin. So guys, I'm going to go over to the machine to stitch. I'm going to sew from here. Following the allowance we left, I'll sew from here all to this point as well to here so the next thing i'll be doing now is to turn to the right side i'll turn to the right side like this so after turning to the right side this is the sewing allowance we are going to use to fix on the neckline I'm going to give it a, a good press now. So let me iron it flat and I'll be back. So guys, the next thing will be to fix it to the neckline. So to fix it on the neckline, I'm going to fold again to get the center, the center of the collar. So I'm going to notch that point. This is the center. I'll take the center of the neckline. I'll place it like this. So I'll notch the center. It will be like this. So this side that has collar, collar stay, will be like this. It will be facing the wrong side of the shirt. So it will be facing you, a kind of. By the time you fold your collar, it will be like this. So we are going to fix it. We are going to match the two notches together. And now you can pin it. But I'm going to go over to the machine to join the, the neckline. So this is the neckline. So after stitching the neckline like this, you have something like this. You have something like this. So the next thing I'll be doing is to use this part. You know? The way I folded this is going to help us a lot, especially with this kind of material. So you won't be struggling with folding it. And after sewing it, if you do it like this, after sewing it, it will come out very neat. So if you do it like this, it is better. So we are going to use this part now to, you know, cover up the rough edges, this allowance here. I'll just fold it inward. I'll place it inward like this. And then use this one to cover it up. As simple as that. So I'm going to go over to the machine now. Place this inward like this. I place it inward like this. I hope you can see what I'm doing. Just place it inward like this. It's not difficult at all. Once you place it inward, the next is to cover it with this. All you need to do is just to run a stitch down without stress so guys our shirt is ready and it's looking so beautiful go ahead and give this video a thumbs up so that others can see it as well and subscribe if you have not done that and turn on your notification bell so you'll be notified for more videos thank you so much this is the color now this is how it came out very nice so go ahead and try it out let me know your results in the comment section make sure you make one shirt for yourself it is very very simple so for the button you place button at the left side while you make your button hole on the right side so you can place your button by four four inches gap place one here measure four inches place another one Measure 4 inches, place another one until you are done. So the same thing you did to here, you, you create your buttonhole with the same measurement. Do you understand? So I'm going to put it on and use my pin to hold it for you to see. So that later I'll go and do my buttonhole. Place my button. And yeah, that is it. So guys, 
this is it for the shirt thank you so much for watching till next time i'll see you again don't forget to give this video a thumbs up okay i'll see you again for now it is bye bye